I appreciate uh, the Lord tonight, don't you? Amen. Yes. I'm so glad that the Lord has uh, given us an opportunity to be together. And uh, we, uh, we in Sebring always pray for the break of assembly. And uh, we, uh, we're we uh, a small group. We, my voice is not up to par. I just, uh, we just got back from Las Vegas. We were there about 10 days. And I really didn't think allergies would affect me in, well, in the middle of a desert, you know. <laughs> But I lost my voice while I was there. And uh, we, uh, in the Las Vegas church, whenever you go, you you got to talk. You can't get away without not speaking. So they gave me a microphone, and I whispered in the microphone. <laughs> but we had a good good time. My throat still not up to par, but rather... Uh, our brother gave me a Control. cough drop. Amen. So now I have to say a few words between, the you know, taking in the cough drop. So, but I, I, I appreciate what God is doing in this hour because God is doing something. Yes, amen. In the middle of all the atrocities that we face in life today, and it's, it's terrible. Yeah. I used to use the phrase, and I quit doing that, that if God doesn't judge this nation for the immorality that it has, uh -huh. uh, he would have to resurrect, resurrect uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Right, man. But I was on the phone with somebody this week, my uh, former, or he still is, I still look at him as my father-in-law, but uh, Jan, Sister Zonabelle's, uh, sister, my deceased wife's father, 90 years old, and he said, wait a minute, I want to say something to you. I said, what? He said, God's already 50 years too late if he uh, doesn't resurrect uh, Sodom and Gomorrah because we're, he should have done that 50 years ago. And, uh, and he was talking about the de degeneration of, of the uh, moral character of this age. Uh -huh. And we're living in a Turk, and Paul the Apostle called it uh, uh, terrible times. And, and uh, perilous, he got, yes, perilous times, which is uh, defined in the Greek as being terrible times, hard times. And um, we're in a dispensation that actually is a wonderful dispensation to be alive. Amen. Because the greatest event <coughs> of the church is right here right. upon us. Amen. Amen. <coughs> that in the last days, in the very last days, uh -huh. there would be ter there would be perilous times, and there would be a time of of contradiction and people coming at the church. And there are several people coming at the church. Our way of worship, to most, is is outdated, and to most, it's not acceptable. I guess it would be acceptable if we had a few strobe lights up here. Oh, come on. Yeah. You know, come on, brother. little red, blue, yeah. and green lights. And, uh, come on. and then it would be acceptable if we had a uh, motivational speaker. You know what a motivational speaker is, don't you? He's one of those that makes you feel good. All right. He'll tell you everything that makes you feel right. Yeah. And... Uh, and that, uh, that's what is being presented as the gospel. Yes. But we know that the truth is what we need in this hour. Amen. And to help us to be delivered from this bondage uh -huh. called the flesh. Yes. And to help us to be only not just being filled with the Spirit, but be led by the Spirit. Amen. Yes. There's a lot of people that get filled with the Spirit. Uh -huh. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. But they are not led by the Spirit. Right. Right. And we know that Paul the Apostle in the book of Romans. Give me a tissue. Pray. I've got to get rid of this light. This, this thing here is worse than what my throat is. But, uh, but uh, we know that Paul uh, gave the illustration in the book of Romans. I think that 
The best chapter in the Bible is the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. Yes. It's the very center point of what we stand for. All the apostle gave it to us, and he put it in that book of Romans. That's the center point. That is the very center point. Now, a lot of people <laughs> like to read the first verse. You know, it says, there's therefore no condemnation. I like that part. Who are in Christ Jesus. But they fail to define what it means to be in Christ Jesus. Right. Uh -huh. And then also, also then, uh, who thought that then, uh, what's, how does, there it is right there, blind as a bat. Uh, to them in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but walk after what? The spirit. The spirit. The spirit. The spirit. Now, there's a phrase that's used in Romans, and I can't recall. It's one of those chapters, 6, 7, or 8 chapter, where Paul the Apostle said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. All right. Now that, now that illustrates something to me, lets me understand, that for me to be called a child of God, and he addresses, he uses the term son of God, but that's also... Uh, that covers everybody, by the way. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you guys, uh, you let you sisters out there. You're not guys, but you sisters out there. You're included in that phrase. And uh, but for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now you know, you and I know, and have enough understanding that we can't fight this battle by ourselves. All right, man. We can't be overcomers because we design it or we uh, we work so hard at it, so vehemently. Yeah. We work at it, and we try to work at it. But do you know what? Unless you have the Spirit of God help you, you're not going to be a conqueror. That's right. Amen. The Bible uses that phrase, you know, Paul uses that phrase in that setting, uh, setting again. He said, we are more than conquerors. I'm, you know, I've heard a lot of people shout over that scripture, you know, when, uh, when, a, when a minister has tried to vehemently uh, preach and try to get people on their feet, uh, you know, to get response. First of all, when a preacher preaches for response, he's not really doing what God called him to do. Right. Come on. Because a preacher shouldn't preach for response, but he should preach for effect. All right. Because if the truth is being preached in, in, in the right, uh, right manner, it doesn't matter if people shout. It doesn't matter, does it? Right. Right. It doesn't matter if they get up and jump up and down and shout. Uh -huh. But if the truth is really preached uh -huh. and it's really ministered, there's going to be a change take place right. in that person's right. life. Uh -huh. And that is what the message ought to be for. Yes. After all, that's why I go to church, because I want to make it. How about you? Yes, amen. I want to make it. Amen. I don't want to just go to church to be recognized as an individual that comes to a church service or uh, get a pat on the back or a smile from the preacher or an okay from the um, elders or, or some recognition. No, that's not why I come to church. I come to church that I might hear the unadulterated word of God right. that will change my life Amen. and change my standing in God. Because it doesn't, you can't become a child of God until you've learned how to be led by the Spirit of God. Now being led by the Spirit of God is not being in this kind of area. Now, I, I don't say, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying that's not being led by the Spirit of God. That is a response. Just like when I feel like I, I'm at home sometimes and I feel like I get a revelation from God. Have you ever done that? Yes. You sit down in the middle of the night, right. and uh, that's when I do most of my studying. It drives my wife wild, but that's all right. She'll have to live with it, you know. But I get up in the middle of the night and I do some studying. And sometimes I just get a revelation, and that's when I really start shouting. I start praising God because that revelation is something that brings life to my soul. And that life is not to shout, but that life is the unadulterated Word of God 
that comes into my heart and teaches me how to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Now, when you use that phrase, and you can, uh, I think in Romans it's uh, repeated several times, uh, and uh, yeah, go back to that 8th chapter, first verse again, Brother Steve, if you would. And uh, that, um, he said, there's therefore no condemnation, but uh, to them who are, who walk not, that is, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Next verse, please. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Now you can shout. Say, praise God for that. Amen. 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 That is the greatest revelation an individual could ever receive in their life. Amen. To not walk after the flesh. All right. Now, I know that we, if Paul, Paul made the magnificent example in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, if you can recall, where he said the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit lusteth against the flesh. And he said these are contrary one to another. They are contrary. Yes, sir. Paul said in the seventh chapter of the book of uh, Romans, that is, he said in that seventh chapter, Paul made the very illustration, and he made the statement in that chapter. He said, when I would do good, evil is present. So when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that was a wonderful experience. I thank God for it every day. It was a wonderful experience. If you're wondering where I got the Holy Ghost, I'll show you. Yes. 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 Right here. Thank you. Right here, 50 years ago, right here, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And uh, that, that is where I received that experience. But where I learned how to be led by the Holy Ghost is right here in these seats and out there. That's where I learned how to be led of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit, the Bible, of course, addresses it. And I'm just reiterating things you already know, I'm sure. But the Bible already also expresses that Jesus, as he was ascending and he was given his last, last uh, communication with his, uh, with his apostles. And uh, before he ascended, he said, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Now, they already had the Word of God instilled in their spirit because Jesus put that in there. And he put that Word of God directly in their spirit. But for them to have the power to live that. Because somebody said, well, he meant that they would be witnesses. Well, witnesses is not just telling somebody about Jesus. That's right. Amen. You can talk to somebody about Jesus and people that don't even have the Holy Ghost right. talk about Jesus. All right. That, that, that's, not being, that, that's not all to being a witness. Right. Let me rephrase that. Amen. That's not all to being a witness. Yes. But how I live my life all right. and how I demonstrate all right. what I have in my spirit Amen. is the greatest witness that right. any person could ever reveal right. to right. somebody that needs help in, the, in their life. Amen. There are so many people in trouble today. I, yes. I was sitting in that service today. I think the brethren, you guys did a beautiful job. It went really well today. I, I thought uh, that uh, the family was very touched by uh, the, uh, the service today. But as I was sitting in that service, and I looked, looked at our young people today, and I look at the, the, gra the gra grave the gravity of all that is in this world overpowering the minds of our youth today. I'm praying God send a mighty, mighty revival that will absolutely demonstrate the Word of God to these individuals that are needing help in their lives. Because there are people in this world that need Jesus. There are people in this world that need the Word of God. They don't need to be entertained another session of entertainment. They don't need 
to hear the best singers or the best motivational speakers, but they need to hear the word of God that can change their condition and change their life and let the power of God demonstrate itself through them. Blessed be the name of God. Well, that's what we need. We don't need another motivational speaker to get up and speak. I've been known to be negative, uh, be opposite to a motivational speaker. I can turn people off, I guess. That's what they mean. But, but, uh, but I want to be a person or an individual that will make an individual. I was in that. I was in. Um, uh, my daughter works over at the uh, uh, Golden Corral. Thank you. I'm getting old. <laughs> That's why God gave me a young woman yes. to help me. I, I can't remember names. I can remember faces, but I can't remember names. Do y'all have problems with that too? Or is that just me? But anyway, we were at the Golden Corral, and we were having dinner because I like to surprise Kathy every now and then when I'm in town, and I sit there, and she's a server. And she gets the biggest tips when I'm in there. And uh, I, I left her a $20 tip, and my wife said, that's not enough. I said, honey, this is this is Golden Corral. This is not, uh, you know, the other place. No, that's not enough. So I put another 20 down. She said, that's not enough. And uh, I said, it's enough for me. <laughs> and uh, so then we got out to the truck and she said I left some more <laughs> but I was at the Golden Corral and we were patiently having dinner not 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 speaking a whole lot and and, uh, and this lady in the next table uh, leaned over I was I had my tie off and my coat she leaned over and she said uh, she said, are you a pastor? And I said, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and uh, she said, uh, well, where's your church at? And uh, she, I said, well, it's in Sebring. You want to drive to Sebring? She said, well, who are you affiliated with? I said, well, I'm affiliated with the Braden Gospel Tabernacle. Have you ever heard of the Braden Gospel? Tabernacle, she said, is that Brother Marlowe's church? <laughs> and I said, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And uh, she got to talking and she said, um, I am so tired of being entertained when I go to church. And I'm looking for a church. And uh, she said, uh, uh, she said, it is, it is not helping <laughs> the people of God to be entertained. And that lets me know that we're living in a day right now that the sons of God are needing to come forth. What was it Paul said? He said the, uh, the earth helped it travail it in pain delivered be delivered that's not the scripture is it? Is that it? It's in Romans. Let's find that. Eight Romans chapter 8? Romans. Say eight chapter eight. Romans. What is that? Around the 28th verse or so? Something like that. 19th verse? The earnest expectations of the creature waiteth. You're right, Emily. I'm sorry. That waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, a lot of times we misinterpret manifestation as being a great ability to heal. You know? There are, there, there are programs on TV that that's all they do is heal. If you know what's going on behind the scenes, you quit watching them. All right. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of things behind the scenes that you're not aware of. Right. Absolutely. Right. I remember one time I I, I was listening I was uh, talking to this uh, brother uh, who was involved in in those movements and he said one afternoon he was sitting in the office there. After, after the service, and there was a knock on the door, and there was a woman at the door. He said, oh, that's that woman that just got healed. And the one 
over that meeting said, well, that's my mom. <laughs> so that kind of lets you know that there's all types of things going on. Yep. And, uh, and then sometimes uh, people falling out have to be forced out. Yes. Right. Or people that are falling out are spoken to before that service ever began. That's right. That's why I love to be part of a local assembly. That's oh, yeah. so why I love to be a part of a local church, because that pastor is is like a book. You can read him. You can see what he is mm -hmm. and who he is. But uh, the the church or the world is looking for an earnest demonstration of people living what they preach, Amen. of people manifesting the Word of God and letting that Spirit of God activate that Word of God. Amen. And then they are demonstrating the very life of God, the words that Jesus left here. Jesus said, he looked at it, he looked at his disciples and he said, the words that I'm talking to you, they're not my words, they're my Father's words. Yeah. The words that I'm saying to you, uh, and if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You have absolutely seen the Father when you've seen me. And I'd like to get to a place, how about you? I'd like to get to a place in Jesus Christ that when you've seen me, you've seen Christ and in turn have seen the Father. Because this, this world is looking for a people that will live what they believe. Yeah. And the glory of God will not come to the church All right. in its fullness until there is a manifestation right. of the sons of God right. in this world right. that we're living in today. Yeah. I appreciate being with you today. My voice is coming back. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Oh. I appreciate being with you today. Yeah. I appreciate feeling the glory of the Lord. Yeah. But I'm so glad for the revelations of truth that is instilled in my heart that I sat in this place and received and heard. Blessed be the Lord. And now it's time, it's high time for those that have the truth to demonstrate what they have and to live what they have. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible said that Peter walked the streets. He didn't lay hands on people, he walked down the streets. And the very countenance of Peter healed those that were needing healing. Yes. Blessed be the Lord. Amen. Let's not get so caught up in healing because that will come. It will come. Right. But oh God, let us come closer yes. to your word. Yes. Let us measure up. Let us be the church as the early church demonstrated. That power let the latter rain church come into existence. Amen. In a tragic age, I am terrible age for us. Amen. But it's there's people out in the streets of Brighton in the day that are hungry. Physically, I'm talking yes, about. Sir. There are people that have no roofs over their heads. There are people that are walking, uh, walking down the street begging for money, begging for so they can buy food. And you've got to be careful what, what, how you deal with that because mm -hmm. a lot of them are begging for money for drugs yeah. and for alcohol. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but when a person is really and in need, I want to help them. But here's the greatest need that I see in this world is that there will be a, a demonstration of the sons of God come to a reality uh -huh. to where the soul of that individual can receive what they need from God. God. Because after all, what did Paul say as far as this life here? He said, it's just temporary. Didn't he say that? He, said, he called it temporal, but that's temporary. He said, this in this life, all things, it's just temporary. Everything we do here, if we, if, if our response, if our response to the Word of God is this, 
to make our lives better here on this earth. If that's all we're looking for, we're looking for the wrong thing. Because actually what God put us here in this assembly is to learn how to be a part of that new, new kingdom that is a spiritual kingdom. Israel was recognized by God as, a, as the nation that he dwelled with. Uh, during that early dispensation, during that er, early of uh, the old covenant, Israel was under that that orchestration of God. God told Abraham, He said, "I want you to circumcise. I want you to circumcise every male member of your because it shows a pact or or a a, a, a joint a, agreement that we have made." And God did base that agreement not just on uh, on what he said, but he said this agreement is on me. It's on me. There's no uh, greater uh, greater pact than God can make if it's on him. Amen. And he made that, did that, this, that time, that dispensation. And here comes Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah. He said he started talking about a different circumcision. And that circumcision is of the heart. Amen. That circumcision is letting me and you Amen. learn the word of God that will separate the flesh Amen. from us Amen. where we can be spiritual children of God right. led by the spirit Woo! of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Listen to the Lord. Amen. Being led by the Holy Ghost is being led by that revealed truth yes. that's in your heart and in your spirit. Amen. When you let that word of God that lead you and guide you. It is the spirit of truth that is leading and guiding you and letting you see the things that you need uh, for your heart. I want to be a Christian, not just a term loose, loosely used uh, in this world, but I want to be a Christian. All right. There's a reason why those disciples were tacked with that name uh, in the 8th chapter of, uh, of uh, Acts. There's a reason why they were labeled with that name. They were labeled with that name because they demonstrated what they had in their spirit and in their lives. So I'm glad to be in Braden tonight. I'm glad to be able to give what's on my heart. Not something pre-planned, not something pre-made, but something that comes from my heart. Can you feel my spirit? My heart is not. I don't want you to recognize me as some great elaborate speaker. After all, I'm too old for that stuff anymore. <laughs> Somebody said, do you love being a pastor? Well, I don't know if you can use the term love, but I do it because God called me to do it. I do it because God has, I have to be careful because i got Brother Howard sitting out there, so I have to be careful. But I, it's not just because, let me rephrase that, it's not because it's, it satisfies my ego, because my ego has long gone. It has long gone. I know I have an ego in my truck. No, that's, that's, that's. Eco. <laughs> My wife said it's ego because eco. But but I've long lost that desire to be noticed and recognized. I want to make it. I want to make it. I want to hear and read and study what will help me. Not to be a better speaker. No. Not to be a, a more professional preacher. No. Not to be uh, more of an influential speaker, but God let me hear those things and let me be able to reiterate those things that will bring life to the soul. All right. That will bring a person from the pits and the bottom of the flesh and bring them up to a high place in Christ Jesus. After all, what's the highest place a person could be called in and that would be called a son of God? Blessed be the name of the Lord. He came for that purpose. That purpose. I know that we elaborate on the fact of him dying on the cross, but do you know what? The greatest debt, the death that Jesus paid was when he walked here on the streets and he, he denied himself and he caused his, himself to be denied. Yeah. He died. Yeah. 
He died to himself. That was a greater death. And through that example, you and I can follow that example. Because the law could not bring perfection, but the bringing in of a better hope could. And the bringing in of that better hope was Jesus Christ who came and gave us the wonderful spirit of the Holy Ghost and put the word of God in our heart, in our spirit. Hallelujah. And we can and we will be overcomers in this generation. Hallelujah. I've been in this way a long time. I hope I haven't been in the way, but I hope and pray that God will let me see before my uh, last days upon this earth, will let me see the coming in of the latter rain dispensation of the church. And a lot of times we've preached in the past that that latter rain is a downpour of the Spirit, that the Spirit of God will just absolutely saturate the church. Well, that might be, but there's got to be another pouring of rain, and the pouring of rain uh, was demonstrated a lot of times uh, in the Old Testament as being the Word of God right. coming forth. Right. Blessed be the Lord. When Elijah looked out and he saw that hand, like a, a hand man's hand, it was full. It was full, not just of the Holy Ghost, but the Word of God. God is raising up men all over this country that God is going to use in this last day to bring the revelation of truth to the church that's going to inspire every individual that will reach out and touch him and touch that spirit and they'll receive what they need in their heart and in their life. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God. Honestly, it doesn't matter if he touches my body, my physical body again or not. No. He delivered me some 15, 16 years ago from death. Amen. They gave me six months to live. And I said, all right, all right. And a guy thought I needed counseling when I said that. And well, I was okay. I was sitting on the end of that, uh, that uh, examination table when he came back with the news after, after they did the... Uh, the um, I got in that machine, whatever. No, not an MRI. It wasn't an MRI. They did a, 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 a scan of my heart. And um, and uh, you guys know what I mean. They just, you get on this thing and the table and they go into your vein and go into your heart. Catheterization, that's what it's called. Yes. They did that and they came out. They, they, or rather, I went back to the visit to the doctor and he said to me, he said, um, you need to get your house in order. I said, okay. He said, get everything ready to go because I said, well, I've got a business, I've got a church. All right, now, what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> he said, well, you've got six months to live and possibly a little bit longer. And I said, is that right? All right, thank you, doctor. Uh, I'll get my house in order, get everything settled, get everything that done, and I jumped on an airplane, and I went to a general convention. How about that, huh? There go. I flew up there to Des Moines, Iowa, and I got there just in time. They put me next to Brother Goodman, and I got there just in time, and Brother Marlon was preaching a house of fire. <laughs> you know, he does that, doesn't he? Yes. And he was just preaching, and he had taken his coat off, and... He was going at it, and I sat down. He, he stopped preaching dead. And he walked back to me, and he looked me in the face, and he said, your heart's not going to take you out. Forget about that. And when I went, he went back, got back up there and started preaching again. And a few months later, the doctor got up off his desk after he heard the report after an echo, and he heard the report. And he scratched his head, and he said, I don't know what to do to tell you. And he, I said, what? He said, your heart is getting back to normal. And I said, it is. And he, I said, I thought I had six months to live. He said, now you don't. <laughs> and he, he was like, he, he was amazed. He was amazed himself. My ejection fraction was in the teens. And when he, when he, 
mentioned that, it was 45. It had gone back to normal is around 50 or a little more, but acceptable is 50. And it was back to 45. And I left that place and I told him, I said, he said, well, you've got to, you've got to really thank medica med the medication you're thinking, you're uh, taking. I said, oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That's right. I think there's a Lord that wants to keep me around for a little while. There must be something I must do to help make help somebody reach perfection. Oh, now my wife says that that was her. <laughs> because I I help her to reach perfection. You live with me for a while, you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm just the sweetest guy you ever saw. But uh <laughs> but I live, I'm living today. Today I'm alive. Today I have more truth than what I had back there. I have a revelation of truth that is helping me to learn how to be a son of God. How to be a son of God. Isn't that what you want to do? I want to be a son of God. Help me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, how to be led by the Spirit. It's one thing to be filled with the Spirit, but oh God, let me be led by the Spirit. To be led by the Spirit of God. Yes, now to be led by the Spirit of God, it takes the Word of God. Yes. It takes an understanding of the Word of God. Yes. Because that's what helps us to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. For the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus. Here's your scripture, brother. The same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus yes. from the dead. Yes. If it dwells in you, it will also quicken you. Yes. Now that scripture to me means that if I go ahead and let the Spirit of God lead me and guide me, it is going to quicken my spiritual life to a life that is in Christ Jesus. And I'll walk not after the flesh, but I'll walk after the Spirit. Yes. 